G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now look at this big pile of kits here. What the heck is going on? Well, I went to see my friend Becca, you see. He said he was selling a few Airfix kits. He doesn't really like Airfix much. You know, he's more of a sort of a Tamiya guy. Whereas I'm the opposite. So, you know, one guy's trash is another guy's treasure. So I popped around thinking I'd pick up maybe a couple of kits. But look, when I got talking to the Becker, he said, you can have the whole lot if you swap it for one of your kits. I thought, oh, this is good. It's not going to cost me any cash and do a swap. Now, he knew I had a duplicate. Well, actually, I've got a few of my Wingnut Wings collection. So I've got a few there where I've got two of them. I don't really need to, you know. Probably only ever get around to building one of them one day, maybe, yeah. Anyhow, so I swapped one kit and I got 12 kits. And that, to me, is fantastic. So um, you know, if you're counting at home, you'll only see 11. That's because one's back there. The Becker had already started building it. And um, he lost the box, which he, he does. I don't know what he does. He throws away bags. He throws away boxes. That's how he builds. He's crazy. <laughs> Anyhow, this is one of my videos I do every season, if you haven't seen this before, because I know we have a big influx of new subs. G'day, new subs, who joined after watching my Airfix Supermarine Spitfire, the civilian version. So there's more Airfix to come, guys. Don't you worry about that. Okay, this is a segment we call Workbench and new kits this one's for summer so you get an idea what that kind of <laughs> means yes we'll be tugging at the problem of what is houdini you know stretching and and pulling at himself to find out what's going on his bench yes what goes on in the wee hours on houdini's bench well there's a bit of that yeah <laughs> all right you want to know more all right roll music <laughs> I usually start these videos talking about what's on my workbench and then I move on to the new kits. Now, technically, most of these aren't new kits. <laughs> it's hard to believe. In fact, already, uh, well, this bottom one here, this lightning, right? That's going off to David Eves. He wanted that one. I knew he was after one. Now, there is a problem with this kit. Becker got it. He was all excited. And then he found there's a crack in the fuselage. Right? Pick. It's a clean crack. I'm trying to say that with your bloody teeth in. It's a clean crack, and quite frankly, I've looked at it, David's looked at it from the photos, it would just glue together perfectly, it's on the underside of the aircraft, if you've got to put a bit of putty in it, you'll never see it, the wing covers it, who cares, but no, that was enough for Becca to go, no, this kit is rubbish, I don't want it, so you know, he's basically ditched a perfectly good, that's the 148 scale lighting, it's a huge kit, and it is a beautifully done kit. It's one of the few from Airfix where the panel lines aren't real troughs. They're actually quite reasonable. It's a lovely kit. Anyhow, David Eves is getting that one for a very reasonable price. So I'm basically, you know, just selling these at cost for the ones I don't want. Also, um, I think it's a walrus here. Now, this walrus, I think it's a silver wings one. Yeah, this walrus I'm keeping. But I have in my stash another walrus. It was a previous issue. So I know a guy that wants Aorus, he's going to get mine, I'm going to keep this. So net stash change, nothing. So it's not really a new kit, sort of. Now, moving through my pile. Well, at the top here, this is the kit that actually Becker used in his last video on um, Airfix. And I can't remember if I copied him or he copied me. I think he copied me, he usually does. <laughs> he usually says, oh, Harry's doing that, he's doing really well. So um, he did. A video comparing airfix to airfix but he well actually not airfix to oh, what was it i forget now he was looking at something he was comparing this is a pretty old kit what i did when i did my airfix comparison of course i had the latest kit and i compared it to one from the end of last century just to see what the there i thought that was a very realistic comparison it was quite interesting to see the differences and really how far they'd come sure the interiors are better and there's a lot more parts and the rest of it but I was quite actually, I can't see anything wrong with the old kits. But anyhow, he compared this. I forget what he compared it to. But anyhow, I think his comparison was more chalk and cheese. But he was fair about it. Anyhow, I've got two of them. I don't know how he managed that. There's two of them. So I'll, I'll pick the best one for myself. And um, somebody else can have that other Airfix Mark 12. Yes, it could be you. It could be you. Right, moving the pole down. There is a lovely little pricks. Um, pricks? P-R-X-I-X. Pricks, I don't know how much to say. See if it's still got the original sticker on it there. Now, I don't do 170 second scale, so I'll probably sell that one as well. So these will be at the Riverside Model Club's um, 
Christmas meeting, and um, if they'll get the first you know, chop at them, and the price will be very reasonable, they'll probably be about half retail. And these, as long as the kits are still in new nick, half retail less if they're rooted. <laughs> I don't think they will be. Uh, this one I'll keep. This one I'll keep. Oh, the box art's a bit. That's sort of a. Uh, yeah. It's, it's had a bit of a go. It's a pity. It's a clipper, right? This is a lovely old classic kit from Airfix, and it's a clipper. So, um, yeah, so I haven't even had a look inside the box. <gasps> That's a lovely kit. That is going into my to be kept pile. Over there, yes. Not going to let that one slip. Not let that one slip. Now, what else we got here? We've got an iron dickhead. Uh, an, an iron dickhead. Uh, an, an iron decker. Now, I've already built one of these. Pick. Yeah, I did the previous model. This one's got different decals and slightly different. It's basically the same model. It's a joy to build. I might just keep it and build it anyway because it's, you know, I think it's only worth 10 or $12 new or something like that in Australian money. So that's, you know, like 10 cents American at the moment, the way the dollar's going. Important was always a shilling, a pounds, you know, a couple of pesos. That's about all they're all worth here. You know, Australian dollars worth nothing at the moment. Nothing. It's terrible. I mean, especially when I get paid in Australian dollars from YouTube and Patreon, right? Hello to all my Patreon subscribers. Yes, I'm not really whinging complaining about you. You guys are great. Here's a few new Patrons this month. Welcome, welcome. I will get round to giving you a personal hello and talk to you. And then that's what you get. If you sign up my Patreon um, account, right, for as little as a dollar a month, right, that's all you... I don't expect you to pay much more. You can. It's up to you. And then you'll get direct contact with me. you get your uh, videos early. And when you do get to see them, there's no adverts. Terrific. Because the rest of you poor buggers, yeah, you get to see them, you know, a day later. News is already stale. And they're saturated with bloody adverts for God knows what. <laughs> so, yeah, have a look at Patreon. And as I said, if I can get uh, 3,000 Patreon, uh, uh, 3,000 of my subs, which is only half, I've got oh, more than that. I've got over 8,000 subs now. Half of you guys put $1 a month in for Patreon. I can make this my career. I'll just do this all the time. Punch out videos. In fact, I did the first month when I did Patreon. Because basically I was, uh, we were sort of in a semi-lockdown. It was still between contracts that had started up again. And um, I had all the time in the world. So I was punching out two videos a week. So I punched out you know, eight videos that month for everyone. It was a lovely month. Whereas last month I only did four. Yes, because I was busy, working. Came out of the bloody lockdown here. Suddenly everybody wanted bloody adverts done and magazines made and posters put up. Oh, I was running around like a bloody, you know... Like a one arm bloody, what was it, one-legged bastard in an ass-kicking factory. <laughs> yeah, I'm dickhead. Yes, I'll be building that one. That's in my pile. Now, what have we got here? Now, this is an oldie. I'll probably keep it because I really have a soft spot for very old Airfix kits. And we have a group build coming up next year. The um, Bassa Cat had been talking to the people in my Facebook group, Fuck of the River Counters, right? Yes, that's a real group. Fuck up the rivet counters. It's run by a cat. That's the cat. Yes, she runs it. And um, one of the suggestions for our group builds next year, we have four a year. Each one's, you know, the first three months, the second three months, and so on and so on. One of the suggestions was um, you had to build your old kit, like a kit you'd built when you were young, or as old as you could think. Now, I'd, I'd built a Spitfire when I was, you know, oh, goodness me, in the, in the mid-60s. I was a real whippersnapper back then, I can tell you. So um, this is a pretty old kit. It might be the closest I can get to getting an old uh, Airfix kit. Unless I can find an old one in a bag, I might keep that one for the group build. Bit of nostalgia. All right, Walrus. We already talked about Walrus. Yeah, this one. Silver wing, so I'll be doing the Australian version. I will be keeping. And the lucky recipient, you know who you are, mentioning no names, Bill. <laughs> Hello, maybe watching. Yes, you'll be getting a still brand new, never touched, totally virgin Airfix Walrus. Yeah, still in its box. Be still in its bag too, everything. Now what else we got here? I haven't even really had a good look. Oh look, um, it's it's a Boeing. Um, it's a fortress, but it is a British one. Well, it's in British livery, so that's nice. So we'll have a look at that kit. We might do like a, a massive unboxing. How about that? We'll do Harry at any's Airfix unboxing. We'll just quickly run through a lot of kits, but not this time. This is this is work mention new kits. All we do is have a look. So I'm pretty keen to keep that one. Now, oh, it's a rocket. Yes, yes. Get a rocket in your pocket. Yeah. Saturn V. How about that? Now, I um I like this, but but um, Bernard had his eye on this one. So, don't tell him. This is a secret. Shh, it's just you and me. Don't tell anybody else. This is Bernard's birthday. Uh, well, birthday and Christmas. It's his birthday's running January. This is Bernard's Christmas present. Right? Don't say a word. 
Am I gonna see? <clears throat> so we'll just quickly hide this over here. That's in the, in the pile that I'm not keeping, right? Don't, don't tell me that. Right, um, now, uh, well, the bottom one here I'd already talked about. So David Eves is getting that. Good on you, Dave. Sand grabber, right? Bloody huge kit. Absolutely gorgeous. I already have one. Um, I got this to see if I preferred the decals or the, the, the plastic, but it's identical, basically. You can build pretty all the same things. The only difference is this is supposedly only the F1s, and mine's got the option of the F6, which I don't really want to build. But the F2s in there, slightly different paint job, but I just want to do one with the big blue spine and the blue tail fin, um, which I can do in either kit. So there's no Arthur or Martha, no advantage. And I wanted to see how bad that damage was uh, as to whether, you know, whether I'd sell the kit on. But it wasn't too bad, and Dave's going to get this one for basically much less than you price. So he's a happy man. I'm a happy man. Beck is a happy man. Everybody's happy. You know? Yes. I feel like Santa this year. I do. I've got the beard. <laughs> so that's that's going in the pile that's disappearing. All right? Now, the piece of resistance, and I don't know if we'll get this in the screen. I might have to go back here somewhere. Um, this is a 124th scale Spitfire. Right. Now, I kind of already have one. If, if you'd seen my videos, you know that quite a few years ago, Malcolm, Malcolm sent me a Mark I 124 scale Spitfire all the way from La America. Yes, amazing. He just wrapped it in a bit of bloody newspaper, chucked in the post. It actually made it here. It was a bit dented and bent and all the rest of it. Had a hole in the box when it arrived, but amazingly, all the parts were there. And I mean, who's going to bloody, you know, who's going to knock back a free kit, especially as a 124 scale Spitfire? Now, they're not perfect. They were. I think I made the set mold in about the seventies, you know. So they they've been around for a while. They're a bit long in the tooth, but they still come up nicely with a little bit of fettling, a little bit of work. These kits are absolutely beautiful. So um, yeah, I won't be building that for a while because I just don't have the room. I don't have room for anything this big here. It's like my ships. I've got to put this down. It's bloody heavy. I'm getting out of sight. <coughs> Moving on now to the workbench. Yes, now on my workbench at the moment, obviously there's the Airfix Spitfire and. Since I did the uh, the box review and the comparison, I've done a lot of work on it. I've pretty well built the interior up, and um, everything's you know been dry fitted, tested, and I am ready to paint that interior, button it all up, and get to the point where I'm pretty well going to start painting the exterior. So there will be a video out after this. It should be the next video, and that will be the Spitfire. And um, I know a lot of you are waiting on that because a lot of you guys subbed and went, "Great, great, let's see the Spitfire." And then, what? He's building this, he's building this, he's building bloody bikes. Oh, oh, news, news. That little motorbike that I uh, knocked up because it was part of club competition. You know, I made the thing in about four days. Throw it in, thought, you know, this would just be a laugh. I won second place. I got a silver medal. It's pretty well what I did last year. I just threw together the bloody submarine, or no, what was it, a little destroyer, and put a kraken around it, threw it in the competition, and I won a silver medal. So I think I've got a method here. Don't care about your build. Put it together in a few days. You know, chuck it on. Make it a real rough paint job. Whatever. Just make it funny and interesting. Put it in and you'll win a silver medal. Don't know what I'll have to do to do gold. Probably have to try harder. <laughs> Be a real modeler. I don't care. I'm in this hobby for fun. Anyhow, I digress. Spitfire, that should be the next video. So look forward to that. That should be out this December. Also this December, I've got to get back to the Dragon Panther. That needs a paint job. So we're going to do, you know, because it was completely finished in the last video. Haven't had any time to work on it with all this, um, the, all contracts coming in and artwork I'm doing on business. That's dying down now, thank goodness. So there'll be a Dragon Panther video out and we'll do the paint job. And I've got a very interesting camo to do with that one. I'm also going to give you a video about the Constructo Bounty, where I'm up to, because I've completely done the one side. Well, that's only the first layer of planks, but boy, does it look nice and smooth. So I'm going to do a video where, well, I won't sit there showing you how I glue every plank. I don't do those sort of videos like some guys do where you're just watching them. I'll glue this plank. I'll glue that plank. I'll glue, you know, no, it's boring as batshit. Sorry. <laughs> well, it's okay if you want to see all that in real time, but, you know, my videos are usually about a thing and how does it affect you and what can we can do and is there a better solution. I do sort of videos that are a bit more investigative, you know, a bit more comparative. I like those words. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to do a video which is going to talk about tapering. That's all basically it is. So I'll show you how I did the last layer of, um, or section of planks on that bounty, and I'll only talk about tapering. Some tricks, some things to watch out for, how to do it, how to make it less stressful. 
Because now a lot of people go, oh, don't read blanks, it's just too complicated. Well, it's not. It's not really. It can be so easy, and I will show you how. Now, the Schnell boat, yes, we'll get another video out of that, hopefully before Christmas. I have done a whole lot of photo etch. Yep, photo etch up all the guns. So basically, the, the whole thing's dry fit put together. I've done all the plastic parts. They're ready to go. Um, I haven't glued anything in because I want to paint it all separately before I assemble. And more about that too in the exciting paint job I'm going to show you because I've I've got some nice reference books and I have got something very... It's not going to be grey. Well, only some of it's going to be grey. This is going to be a very colourful Schnell boat. Wait till you see that. Now what else is on my list here? Oh, the Rich. The Rich cat suit. That was in the last video and that's when I basically did the box open of the Dragon cat suit which is, you know, the sort of uh, the um, amphibious transport craft. Now the Rich one has the torpedoes on it like the new Dragon kit does. Really all I've got to do with that is glue on the last couple of parts and do the camo. And it's only this big. Now I was actually interested. I put it in my cabinet because I said oh, I'll do this one. This is a paint job. That's one video. I'll pretty well paint that up in a couple of days. And I looked at it next to the Schnell boat and went oh gee it was, you know, if it was the same scale as the Schnell boat. It'd be a bit, hang on. It is the same scale as the Schnell boat. The Schnell boat is 172nd and the Schnell boat is this long. And the cat suit, the cat suit was sit on the back of the Schnell boat. Goodness me, these things are tiny. And they're supposed to be transport vessels. Gee, you know? Oh, well, I suppose those Japanese guys aren't very big. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. We love you. We love you. Right. Did you, see my, did you see my hat? Did you see my hat? Right? This is... I had a T-shirt. Well, I have a T-shirt. I've worn it in a couple of the live videos, which a lot of people don't like. But those live videos, I wore this T-shirt. And this is a very serious thing. Australian, right? Research and Space exploration yes it's our nasa but it's um a r s e so typical australian we didn't think through the acronym you know by work bitch and new kits we, we we seem to somehow get these things mixed up and they end up having a connotation which is completely left to field what the subject really is yes all right so anyhow enough of that now what else okay i'll be doing the rich oh i've got to get back and finish the varic right it's, it's trouble is it's in my display cabinet, right? Because basically it's done. All it needs is a bit of weathering, some railings and, 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 and some rigging on it. You know, to all intents and purposes, it's finished. So I'd like to get that finished, hopefully, probably between Christmas and New Year. And that would wrap up this year. Those, those kits would be done. They'd be out. They're pretty well, you know, pretty well all finished. And that'd be lovely. It'd be lovely to get, that's half a dozen kits, get them finished for the year. So, um, so far, I've only managed to finish a handful of kits this year. It's been it's been a very sort of weird year for me. Even with the free time I've had due to the you know, world plague, <laughs> yeah, the virus. But um, that's it. Now, next year, because a lot of people ask me, Harry, Harry, what are you doing next year? Well, I'm trying not to start too many kits. I wasn't going to start any kits next year. But basically, there'll be a couple that I plan to start. Um, but basically, look, I had 30 work in progress in my cupboard when I, when I tied it out. And I thought, oh, this is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous, you know. But I had a look, and 10 of them, I'd done very little. I'd actually just repaired something, or something was broken when it arrived, and I'd repaired it. So I'd called that a kit that was started, but really, it's still a kit. I've never got into it in earnest. I just fixed up something, did some research, and it's sitting in the box. They've gone back in my stash, and I'm calling those kits. So that leaves me with about 20 kits, which are work in progress. So I might get six out of the way before the end of the year, which is a good possibility. I uh, don't get too many interruptions. We don't have any more major international cataclysms. Yes. Um, then I'd get down to 14. If I can get another five of those done in the next few months. Then if I get below 10, I've only got single digits and work in progress, I will start some new kits. So what will I make? Enough waffling, yeah? What will I make? All right, well, there's a fly Mackie in there. Yeah. I found that. That's when I was digging through, going, well, what are all these bloody boxes? What's going on? How come i got 30 kits here? This is ridiculous. Anyway, there's a fly making a beautiful kit. It is 172nd, which isn't my preferred scale. Or is it a 148? Actually, I think it is a 148. It's just a tiny little aeroplane. Hang on. Yeah, it's a 148. I've got to sing over there. Yes, it's a tiny little thing. But that is a fantastic little subject. And I've done most of it. I've just got to basically do the final, put together, paint it, where we go. So that'll be coming up in the new year. I also got, can I read my handwriting here? Rebels Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, look, that thing's been sitting there dry fit. I screwed it together. I literally put screws in, screwed it all together because I was testing out wiring. Well, I've got the wiring down pat now from the Orion. So I'll probably finish the Battlestar and the Orion. That's the other spaceship. It's the one from 2001. So I'll try and sort of have a spaceship thing where I'll get those two out fairly quickly. 
and they'll just get spaceship paint. <laughs> so they'll be in the new year. We'll get those out the way. The Wingnut Wings, Hansa Brandenburg, right? Got to be finished. I keep saying it every year. But that is on my list. That is going to get done. I, I've done a lot of work on it since, since we basically the last videos because I built the motor up. That's all done. just needs to be painted. I want to do that on the video. Um, I'm ready to button it all up. And then it's only a matter of whack the top wing on, put the tail plane on it, some decals and some paint. How hard can it be? Oh, it's got some floats. It's a little bit of rigging. <laughs> but I want to get that Wingnut Wings kit out the way because I want to build more Wingnut Wings kits. So um, I need that out the way and then I can maybe crack open an albatross or something. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? Yeah. Or build that Meng Nuts. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not really excited about that wing Meng Nuts kit. I mean... Yeah, enough of that. Go back and watch the video. It's not Wingnut Wings. It really isn't. It really isn't. Uh, what's on my list here? Um, oh, yes. Once I've got the bounty planking done, which won't be that long, that'll be finished sometime in January, I'll have the second layer on, which is going very fast. So there's only two more videos for the for the bounty to go to, like, call a halt on it. Because I said, once I've got the basic body done, or basic hull done on that, then I'll take a break and I'll do the Perseverance, because that's a um, kit that was given to me and I'm on a promise to build it so um, yeah, it's just been held up because I wanted to get the bounty kind of finished and the bounty's also been at least practice for me to get back into that uh, wood ship building and so far I've, I've pretty well fallen back into it actually I've started to remember everything and you know I've never lost my carpentry skills because I've always built things and done things my whole life and, and I love working with wood so you know I'm back up to steam on that so we will stay on the perseverance because I know Modeler Shipyard are watching. Yep, they actually contacted me. So thanks for doing the review. Did a nice review for us. And they've subbed and they're watching. So is Okra. Okra too. They, they saw me do a review sort of roughly on some of the kits I bought from them. And they're watching. So I'll, I'll crack open some of those kits. But, but let's just talk about the kits that I've got to finish first. I've really got to I say, finish some of the ones in my cupboard. So okay, we'll get the person out of the way. I've got an MA... Napoleon. Now, it's technically not started, but I have opened the box, I've done a lot of research, and I'm ready to go, and I said I would start that Christmas. Well, it's going to be early New Year, probably a January kit, if I get January off. I often do. I forget all this work. I work right up to bloody Christmas Eve, and then poof, I get a break for like three or four weeks, where there's not much happening. So maybe I could crack open the, um, the MA Napoleon, at least get a start on it. That'll be great. And make that my project for the year. It'll take me a year to build it, so I'll, I'll build that as my next plastic ship. Hobby Boss BT2, yeah, well, we've got to get that done. It's been sitting there for ages. So, Armour guys, as soon as I've painted up the Panther, I will get a video out on all the work I've done on the BT2, and then we'll continue construction videos, and then we'll do a paint video for that, because, again, there's a snappy little paint screen for that. It's not just going to be 4BO green. No, if you know my channel, nothing is ever done the boring, simple way. Everything has to look pretty. <laughs> All right, so this is new kits, and well, there sort of is a pile, <laughs> but a lot of them you've already seen, a lot of them we've already talked about, but there's there's things you haven't seen, right? There's, I've been spending money on equipment, so with my, my Patreon money, which I really appreciate, guys, I've been getting things that normally I wouldn't sort of think of splurging out for, so here's a pick. I bought new lights for the studio, I bought a new microphone because I was having so much trouble with that other mic, it looked great, it looked great to see on the desk. But it kept cutting out and cutting in. It was an absolute nightmare to use. Uh, this new microphone is so much clearer, so much easier to use. And what I've done is I've got a little black bendy thing so I can put it on a boom. So I can have it sitting. It's just out of shot. Can't see it. It's a little furry thing. I also bought a bendy thing to hold the iPad. So that's what the iPad's on at the moment, to position it to get a really good shot. And it does really good overheads. So I'm going to do that in the last couple of videos. So my sound quality is up. My lighting quality is better. I'm much happier with the look I'm getting with the videos now. They're um, sounding and looking a lot better. I mean, they weren't too bad before, but you can always be better. <laughs> so I did that, and also I bought myself a brand new one of these. I mean, the Moose. Oh, Guy Murray Smith, if you're watching, <laughs> g'day, mate. The Moose got me onto these bloody things. They're um, friskers nice, right? And they, um, they won't roll over and fall off the desk and jab you in the ghoulies. They can't. That's not how they're designed. They're, they're, they don't roll. <laughs> They're kind of flat and everything. But they have a wonderful ergonomic design. And once you start actually using one of these, they're so nice. Especially if you, you know, like me, you've got a bit of gout in your hands or maybe your hands wobble a little bit. You can really get a firm grip on these because of the way they're shaped. They're very ergonomic. And um, cutting with them is then a breeze. So, um, yes, less stabbing of ghoulies, more cutting of models. They're great. And I bought a whole lot of other little bits and pieces, but, you know, did that. Also, lashed out and got a turntable, although in the end, 
um, I ended up not paying for it. I got I, I picked it up in a sale, and um, the guy said, oh, you looked after me over the years, this, that, and the other. Here, have it as a Christmas present. So that was lovely. So I got this little Tamiya turntable, and um, I've already used it and posted in a few places the uh, cat soup spinning around on it. So um, that'll give me a nice, even rotation when I want to sort of show something off. Because uh, the last video I did the motorbike, and I'm like flicking it with my finger. <laughs> It's all very well. And that was just on my, my painting turntable, you know. So always wanted one of those. I lashed out and bought one of these. Now, you you know, you're sanding on these boats, right? Uh, there's a lot of it. There's a lot of it. And uh, strictly speaking, everyone does it by hand. And you should really try and do most by hand. But I have such problems with my right shoulder. And I, you know, I get... I can, I can be sanding... When I sanded the one side... Of the bounty, I really couldn't do much for another week. I was in so much pain and it's having problems. This is what it's like when you get old kiddies. Yes, start falling apart. Anyway, long story short, I thought, well, maybe I could buy something small to um, sand. I was going to get a Dremel. But then Bernard said, no, don't get a Dremel. Don't get a Dremel. It won't do it. There was no way it's going to go do your boat. What you need is a mouse. <laughs> and I thought, well, how are you going to train a bloody mouse? Run around all over your model and chew it to bloody shape. That sounds impossible, but no, no, no. There's a Black & Decker thing he's called, called a mouse. It's a tiny little sander, right? So I went looking for them, and Black & Decker doesn't make them anymore. You can't find them for love or bloody money. Went down to Bunnings to have a look at a thing that sort of looked like it. It's a detail sander. And I sort of, I don't know, I wasn't real sure. And luckily there was a guy there, you know, I started talking to it. Bunnings is a great big sort of warehouse of tools and things. It's, it's like, you know, it's about as much fun as going to a toy shop. It's great. Um, a model shop. Yeah. Anyway, I got talking to this guy, and he built model ships. Will you believe it? You know, so I used to build radio control model ships. You went, mate, mate, you don't want this. No, a dream will be useless. That that detail sander, no, it won't. You know, you'll tire you out. It's too heavy. What you need is one of these. And this thing is mighty. I um, it's battery powered, so um, basically I, I don't need to run a cord or anything out there, and it's not too noisy. But did it? Oh, it chewed through the planks, but it gave me plenty of control. This thing, I, I sort of frightened. I used the lowest grade sandpaper when I started because I thought, I don't know, you know, chew a great hole in these planks. They're only like two millimeters wide, but it's only got so much power. And I ended up putting the strongest sandpaper on the end because I got control, got how, got how the end use it. And I did the whole side, did like sanded the entire boundary down in half an hour. Then did the fine points by hand and running my fingers over, I felt your bumps, then I'd bring the tool back. So I ended up doing a much better job this time of sanding down the hull for my first row of planking than I did the other side, because the other side I did so much by hand, got tired, got fed up and just left it. It was only when I was planking later on, I found there were a few lumps and bumps I really should tend to. This time, using the tool, um, I really have done a much better job. And my shoulder, not too bad at all, because... My sanding time was probably only about half an hour whipped by hand. So yeah. Now, the new kits. Well, this one, this is a gift from Jim Steen. He knew I had one of these. I actually found one of these in a barn, like a real one of these, right? Found it in a barn, rusting away all in bloody pieces. And I'd really got into Hondas. I've had Hondas for the last 20 years. And um, I love them. You know, there's... there's the way the Honda is, is the way I like to drive. You know, rev the crap out of it, but doesn't use much juice, and you can't go too fast, so you don't get any tickets. <laughs> Anyhow, I found one of these in a barn, and it wasn't much at all. You know, it was a very, very small amount of money, and I bought it, and I managed to get a, a, a license to drive it home, even though it's unregistered. And it was like a on the highway, it was a huge cloud of dust. So my missus was following me in, in our prelude, in our Honda prelude, and all she could see, she couldn't see me in the car, she just saw this big pile of bloody you know, chicken manure and dust and crap and farm droppings and everything all coming off it as I'm driving along. And um, I got pretty well pelted by all this stuff. But anyhow, I got that home and took about three years to restore it. And mine was exactly like this, white with the red interior. So Jim had already been um, reviewed one of these kits on his channel. And he said, oh, I've got another box. Do you want it? And so he sent me that to me. So thank you very much, mate. That will be something. I'll build that somewhere. I don't know when. But I'll build it soon. Yeah, it's, it's on my list for soon. I just need to, as I get all the other things out of the way. Now, this one I did buy. After I sort of got the whole schlepper thing happening, I'm not schlepper thing, the Schnell boat thing happening, right? Getting the Schnell boats, David E's sort of started talking about, you know, there's an airfix kit. Ugh! And of course, as soon as you say airfix, I get excited. And it's the Vosper. So this is basically the British equivalent of the Schnell boat. All right, so it's like, again, a, a motor, motor torpedo boat. So um, I looked around, looked around, oh, look, you know, they were ridiculous money. People were asking, stupid. There was a Revell kit as well, but that wasn't as nice. And the, the Airfix kit, I mean, it's nowhere near as good a kit 
as the new Revell Schnell boat. I mean, chalk and cheese. But it's a classic old airfix kit, and I love them. And finally, it was really weird. We'd, we'd been looking all around the world, Dave and I. We couldn't find them. I'd given up. And bing, my, my alert came up on eBay, because I need eBay alert for it. Lo and behold, across the river, like stone throws distance away from where I live, there's a company there pulling apart a stash that someone had left in a deceased estate. And part of that stash was this. And I got this for about a quarter of the price they were asking for them overseas. And it was only just, you know, spitting distance away. Hilarious. So I actually bought one in Australia, as I'm trying to say. So there you go. That was a kit I had to have. So that goes in my collection. Now, while I was buying Spitfires, because I got that, that civilian Spitfire, I um, I grabbed one of these. Now, Bern and everyone else have been getting the, the new Jewel, um, Jewel edition. They put out an edition... Um, with, with two Spitfires and a lovely artwork and everything. And I thought, oh, that's nice, but I've already got a ton of Spitfires. And jokingly, at one of our little meetings, I said to Bernard, well, I've already got a Spitfire Mark I. And he said, oh, yes, but it's the Airfix one. You need the Edward one. I said, all right, will you buy the Airfix one off me? He said, okay. So we made this deal. If I could find the Edward kit, and I did, just the single Spitfire Mark I. It's identical to the one in this new release, this double kit release, but it's only one, only one. And it's profi pack, so I've got the, um, you know, I've got all the photo etch, and I've got masks and the rest of it, so that's lovely. Don't have to spend any more money. And Bernard bought my Airfix Mark I off me, so win, win, win. Stash didn't increase. Got myself a lovely Edward Mark I. Now, you've seen Napoleon. Oh, have you? Yes, you better have. If not, go back and look at that video. I open this up and this is one of the few kits I've ever come across where you can follow the instructions to the letter. It's that good. MA. MA ships. They are absolutely brilliant. I wish I could find some more, but they don't make them anymore. You've really got to hunt around to find them. Now, there's two here, but, but they're not actually mine. Well, this is the story, right? David Eves wanted some submarines and these came up as a as, as a sell-off on eBay, both of them. And he said, Harry, 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 he said, look, I, I really want this. He wanted the U-47. I really want the U-47, but, you know, I, um, I, I need a bit of help or something. I'm between paychecks or whatever, and I don't want the missus to find out. If I buy another kit, she's going to leave me. You know, <laughs> you know, all the usual things. And he said, you couldn't pick that up for me, could you? So I, I put in a silly bid, and I bloody won. I got them next to nothing. You know, they're only a few shekels each, really. And um, David really wanted the 47, and I'd sort of had a look at the, the Type 21 here, because it has a full interior. And I sort of said to him, well, you really, do you want the Type 21? And he said, no, you have it. So I'm keeping the Type 21. I hadn't planned for it. I've got enough bloody submarines. I'll keep the Type 21, and I want to build the interior. And that's one I would like to crack next year. I'd really like to do that next year. Um, bang, bang, crash, crash. Because that has a lot of a lot of potential, a lot of fun. So David is getting that U47. It's Christmas time at his house. And he'll just tell the missus, oh, Harry bought these all for me. Oh, I hope your missus doesn't watch my videos. Yes, all those kits that he said that Harry gave to me for free. No! <laughs> so I got Becker in trouble once, you know. But I was over there at Becker's place with his missus and waiting Becker was out. You know, I was waiting Becker to turn up. And the delivery guy turned up in the big box. I went, oh, it's Chris been ordering kits. And um, Heidi says, no, no, these are all for you. Chris said there'd be a big delivery be for you. And I went, oh, I don't remember ordering kits. So we opened up the box Nothing to do with me. It was all aftermarket, and everything was aftermarket for his kits. They were, you know, aftermarket for his Tamiya kits, all the rest of it. Nothing that I built. So we went through this whole box. There's like hundreds of dollars worth of stuff in it. And Heidi's fuming, going, what is he doing? Why have you been telling me he's buying it? And I sort of went, um, sometimes I have my kits delivered here, but not very often. And yeah, poor old Becker got him in the poo again. <laughs> now, the, um, the cat, so you've seen that? You should have seen that. That was the last video that I did. If not, go back and have a look at that. I go through that and talk about all the changes to the kit and compare it to the rich Katsu as well. And um, I've also got, years ago, I did the original review on the larger box, but it's the same size kit, Katsu, without the lovely torpedoes and machine guns. Yes, yes. And last but not least, and this is a kit that I bought, I hadn't been planning. Like the kits that I'm sort of buying, I hadn't really been planning it. They're just sort of popping up. And I'm going, yeah, okay. And often I will be selling other kits. I mean, I've probably sold about 12 kits in the last couple of months. So, I mean, as many that are coming in, there's kits going out. Well, until I bought all those airfix. I really have to do a clean out after that. But speaking of airfix, Bernard, this is Bernard's fault. I blame Bernard 100% for this. Bernard says, um, look, this, um, this, this, this Whitley just arrived. And um, bugger me, 
I've already got one. I didn't realise. This is trouble. He has so many kits. I don't think he's got them all on scale, mate, so he can look them up. So he occasionally buys a bargain. Think, this is great. Gets it home, opens up his big stash room. He's got a room. And goes, oh, um, bugger. I've already got one. So the, he contacted me and said, Harry, uh, would you be interested? Now, it's not one I would have picked straight away. I was after a Coastal Command bomber. Uh, I would have preferred sort of more like a Wellington or something like that. But... What the heck? Beggars can't be choosers, and Bernard sold it to me for a very, very reasonable price. So I went, ah, oh, what the heck, you know? Again, one man's trash is another man's treasure. And um, Bernard threw his crap at me, and I lapped it up. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's a kit that, well, that'll go in a long-term thing. I don't know when I'll build that. It's quite big. I'll need some room. So that's essentially all there is in new kits. And, and as I say, a lot of them you've already seen because there would have been reviews. Well, you should have. If not, you need to go back and review them or watch those reviews. And then the other stuff was basically I was buying new, you know, fittings and fixtures and bits and pieces here to um, improve my hobby and improve the videos. And I'll continue to do that. Yes, we'll hire a decent presenter one day. <laughs> All right, well, look, that's enough. This video has gone on way longer than anticipated. So I hope you enjoyed that. That's basically what's on my workbench, um, what I've got and what I've bought and everything that's been going on lately. So you've got all that to look forward to. There'll be a lot more videos this month and hopefully a lot more in January in my downtime from work. So please like, subscribe, comment, just be nice about it. And go to Patreon if you like and throw me a shekel. You know, I could always do with the dollars because I'm pouring it back into the hobby and I'm putting it in kits and sending them off to my mates. So, you know, what comes around goes around. All right, that's enough. Goodbye from Australia and it's Huru from Harry Houdini. <laughs>